Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I don't even know where to begin with this one, all right? Uh, Gods of Egypt is just plain stupid. Well, yeah, let's start there. A steaming pile of digital dung, an overblown, overcooked mess. The biggest sin of this film isn't the waste of money on all that CGI. It isn't the convoluted plot. It's not even the controversial casting of mostly white actors in the lead roles. Believe me, minority actors, you shouldn't be upset that you missed out on being a part of this garbage fire. The biggest sin of Gods of Egypt is that it is not fun, not even remotely. And it's also no secret that an effects-heavy 3D CGI epic like this is going to have some appeal to say, uh... Okay, to stoners. You know stoners are totally down for this kind of visual spectacle. But even they, I challenge those stoners to not end up listless and bored midway through. I mean, this movie is only two hours and seven minutes long, and you'll be checking your watch by the 45 minute mark. Man, this thing is terrible. That's it for the capsule review. Let's just get in depth and get out of here. Whenever you have a movie that involves magic or the force or any sort of supernatural element that isn't grounded in reality, the very first thing that you have to do is establish the rules for the audience. That way, later on in the story, when the characters decide to, I don't know, cross the streams or whatnot, you already know the stakes are high because you've been told that crossing the streams is bad. Gods of Egypt starts off with some voiceover narration that clumsily sets the scene and then we're just thrust into a world where gods live among men, but they're like 10 feet tall and they have golden blood and they occasionally turn into more gigantic silver spirit animal versions of themselves and then one god kills another god and then has the nerve to turn to a bunch of humans who just saw a god die and address them, all right, mortals. Like, hey buddy, who's mortal? Why don't you look behind you, Goldilocks? Anyway, the god of the desert murders the god of the lush jungle area, who's also his brother, because basically he's just sick of living in the desert, man, and he wants to rule some place where he doesn't have to keep washing sand out of his butt crack all the time. Hey, I mean, people have murdered their brothers for less, I guess. My legions of the desert will bring them reckoning! The only god who can stop him, Horus, well, this guy pulls out his eyes, steals his woman, the goddess of love, by the way, and banishes him to a place, I don't know, far away. And that's just the setup. After that, we're sort of off on a grand adventure with some street rat who is definitely no Aladdin and his slave girlfriend, Zaya. Now, Zaya gets murdered in the first reel and spends the rest of the movie sort of marching through this digital afterlife with all the other dead souls on her way through nine gates. Are you paying attention? And at the ninth gate, she's gonna need some sort of rich stuff, you know, some, some booty. Some sort of treasure to pay the passage to these guys that sort of act as like the bouncers for heaven or some such thing. Or she'll get disintegrated. I don't know, she's already dead, but what could be worse than that? Anyway, so her boyfriend, I'll just call him Aladdin. So Aladdin breaks into some sort of booby-trapped tomb to get back one of Horace's eyes. Are you paying attention? All right, I'll continue. So he does all that and he tracks down Horus and he gives him one eye so that Horus can stop Gerard Butler. How do we stop him? Try to keep up. If he's able to do that, he'll figure out a way to get Aladdin's girlfriend the bus fare she needs to get past that ninth gate of hell. God, watching this movie, I felt like I was in the ninth gate of hell. But first, they have to visit Horus's grandfather, that's Ra the Sun God, played by Academy Award winner Jeffrey Rush who sails around space on a pirate ship and shoots fireballs at space monsters in his spare time. Hey, hey, did I lose you? Or are you getting upset that I'm spoiling the entire plot? Well, don't be, because all this happens before that 45 minute mark I was talking about earlier. I didn't even get to the Wizard of Oz road trip that follows where they pick up the weirdest sort of companions for no reason. I'm staying away from the smoky space sarlacc thing and the demon bracelet and the smartest guy on the planet who has made hundreds of clones of himself, or how the rules, remember those rules about who is who and what is even possible? 
I lost count of how many times we're told that so and so doesn't have the ability to do such and such, and then a few scenes later, that very so and so is doing exactly such and such. These are your own rules, people! Okay, okay, you know what? I don't even care. I don't, I don't care! This movie is just toxic in its awfulness. It's too self-serious to be campy or to be enjoyed as a guilty pleasure like Jupiter Ascending. That's right, I said it. I would rather watch Jupiter Ascending. So it goes without saying that I give Gods of Egypt an empty bag of popcorn. If you buy or have already bought a ticket to this, um, hey, what can I get away with saying? Can I say show? I can't? Uh, okay, never mind. Look, if you give this movie your money, you will hate yourself afterwards. Instead of detailing just how many great actors are wasted in this thing, and listing all the people that should be embarrassed to have been in it, I'm just gonna scroll through the cast really quickly and tell you where you can see them in something better. Okay? Kind of like a, a speed round. My gift to you for making it this far. All right, here we go. Oh, uh, 300. Just about anything else. But uh, let's just go with the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Oh, Game of Thrones, of course. Oh, 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 she's gonna be Elektra in Daredevil season two on Netflix. Oh, uh, Man in the High Castle. Mad Max Fury Road. She's one of uh, Immortan Joe's wives. Oh, of course, uh, you remember Brian Brown from uh, FX and FX2. Oh, and, and this guy is gonna be, he's gonna be a Marvel superhero, people. Black Panther. Yeah, that's him. Making his debut later this year in Captain America Civil War and getting his own movie in 2018. So Chadwick Boseman there, uh, he'll bounce back for sure. Uh, yeah, I got nothing for this guy. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, subscribe so we can keep doing what we do. In the meantime, leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and today I will bring you reckoning! <laughs>